Welcome back to the channel. This is the May 2021 SAT US version, non calc section. Let's get into it. Okay, number one. Two lines intersect as shown. What is the value of x? When two lines intersect like this, the angles across from each other are vertical angles, and vertical angles are always equal. So we're just going to set these two bad boys equal to each other. 5x plus 5 equals 7x minus 35. So 2x is going to be equal to 20. So x, nope, 2x equals 40. So x equals 20. There we go. So b is the answer. Number two, what is the positive solution to the given equation? We could solve this algebraically, but it looks easy enough that we can just plug the answer choices in, right? So I'm just going to plug the answer choices in. I don't like hard work. Neither should you. So um, 2 and 4 just look too small, so I'm going to get rid of those. So I'm going to plug in 6 and see if we get 8 as our answer. So when plug in 6, we get 2 times 6 minus 4, and that gives us 8. The absolute value is of 8 is 8, so that tells us that C works. Number 3, which of the following is equivalent to 4x cubed plus 8x squared? We'll just go through the answer choices and see which one it's going to be. A, 12x to the 5th. Definitely not, because what they did there was combine the terms incorrectly. They added the uh, 4 and the 8. But you can't add them, because they are one's an x cubed and one's an x squared. B is incorrect for basically the same reason. C, we can test C out simply by foiling it out. Well, distributing it out. So this gets us 4x to the 3rd plus 8x squared. So C works. All right, now we're going to go to number 4. Um, if 2n plus 12 equals 26n, what is the value of 6n? The most important thing here is that very frequently on a question like this, students will figure out what n is rather than 6n. So you need to get the value of n and then remember to multiply it by 6. Otherwise, you're going to get the question wrong. So let's solve it. Um, 12 will be equal to 24n because we subtract 2n from both sides. So n is going to be equal to 1 half. To get 6n, we just multiply both sides by 6. So 6n equals 3. So c is our answer. Number 5. Quadrilateral A, B, C, D is shown, which equation shows how the measures of the angles of the quadrilateral are related. Well, if it's a quadrilateral, we know that all four angles have to add up to 360. And this is true with any quadrilateral. So we just have to pick the answer choice that adds up all the angles and sets it equal to 360. And that's going to be, uh, it looks like A, because we have X, the 90 degree angle, the B is 90. 2x minus 5 and x plus 35, so a is the answer. Okay, let's see. Now we've got number 6. In right triangle ABC, the length of side AC is 12. The measure of angle A is 40. B is a right angle, which of the following can be determined using the information given. Let's see. Whenever they give us the geometric information, you are going to draw out the shape every single time. Even if you can potentially do a problem in your head, you can still make a stupid mistake, right? And those suck. So we're going to draw out this triangle. So let's see. We've got this right triangle. And we can label this as A, B, and C. It doesn't matter which angles you, love, uh, you label as A and C. The important thing is that you label appropriately what they gave you. They told us that um, B is a right angle, so that's the only thing that's true. Then either of these angles could be A, we just have to make sure to label it as 40 degrees. So 40 degrees. And then I would even at this point quickly label anything else that we can label, even if it wasn't directly stated. So for example, we know that C is going to be 50 because the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 and 40 plus 50 plus 90 is 180. So we actually just proved the first condition to be true, right? Cool. So that was helpful. Now, can we get the side length of AB? 
at first glance, it might look like we cannot. Oh, see, I almost made a mistake myself, right? AC is 12. So now we can get it because we've got handy trick identities. So Katoa. If you're unfamiliar with those, go find the video to review them. Um, basically, we can use a trick identity to figure out the side length of AB. Specifically, what we can use is uh, we have relative to angle, well, A, we have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, so we would be able to use cosine to figure that out. So we can get the second one also, so the answer is going to be C. Number seven, in the xy plane, um, L has a slope of two, line K is perpendicular to the line L, contains the point four comma two, which of the following is equation of a line K? First things first, perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So if line L has a slope of two, line K is gonna have a slope of negative one and a half, which right away eliminates A and D. Then, since they told us it contains the point four two, we could come up with like an actual equation for this, but it's so much easier to just plug those bad boys in, right? So we're just going to plug in 4, 2 into C and D, and whichever one it works for, that's going to be our answer. So let's, let's try C first. So according to C, we should have 2 equals negative 1 half times 4. This is not true because 2 is not going to be equal to negative 2, so C shouldn't work. We're going to test out D just to make sure we didn't mess up somewhere, though. This is a really good habit to get into. When you're doing it, if you've got the time, double check to see if another answer choice doesn't work because it's possible you could have screwed up somewhere. If you're running low on time, forget it. Keep going. You can come back to it later. Circle a question or something. So if we test out D, we get 2 equals negative 1 half times 4 plus 4. And this one does work because we're going to get 2 equals negative 2 plus 4, so 2 equals 2. So D is going to be our answer. Number 8, uh, the given equation give, relates to variables C, X, and Y, where C is bigger than 0, X is bigger than 0, Y is bigger than 0. Which equation correctly expresses Y in terms of C and X? Basically, you're just solving the equation for Y. You might know right away that you can just flip C and Y in this scenario. So this is going to be the same thing as Y equals X over C. But if you're not like quite used to like realizing that yet, just solve it out. So start by multiplying both sides by Y. So we would get C, Y equals X. And then isolate for the variable that you need. So Y equals X over C. So we get to the same answer in both ways. So that's going to be D. Okay, number nine. Uh, the function f is a linear function. The int y-intercept of the graph y equals f of x is an x y-plane is 0, comma, negative 12. What is the y-intercept of the graph y equals f of x plus 2? So if we know that the uh, y-intercept is a 0, comma, negative 12, what they said to us by just adding that plus 2 after f of the f of x, we're just shifting the entire graph up to. Since this is a linear function, we know that just shifts the whole thing up to. So if the y intercept before was 0, negative 12, it's going to be 2 higher, which is 0, negative 10b. Okay, so far this test isn't so bad. Some uh, mildly tricky stuff, but nothing too bad. And somebody's going to be watching the video and commenting like, ah, you messed up uh, number three, four, five, and six. And I'll be like, murder me. Number 10, which of the following is our x-intercepts of the graph y equals x plus three times x minus two over x in the xy plane? First things first, whatever makes the denominator, uh, whatever result, sorry, whatever results in the equation basically being undefined cannot work. So in other words, whatever sets the denominator equal to zero is no bueno, because then you're going to have an undefined function. So right off the bat, x cannot be equal to zero because your denominator cannot be zero. So eliminate choice three. Now we're going to test the other stuff out. What we can do is solve it like you would a quadratic. 
So the way you do that is you set y equal to 0. So we're going to say 0 equals x plus 3 times x minus 2 all over x. Then we multiply both sides by x. So 0 equals x plus 3 times x minus 2. And then remember, when we f do the factoring, your, your answer is going to be the opposite signs of the numbers we have here with the x plus 3 and x minus 2. So we have x plus 3 and x minus 2. Our zeros are going to be x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 2. So that's going to be 1 and 2. So answer choice C. Uh, number 11. The graph y equals 2 to the x minus a is shown where a is a constant. What is the value of a? So basically what happened was they took the graph of y equals 2 to the x and shifted it down some value and graphed it. So that's what's happening. So we have to figure out what that shift was. A good way to do questions that have graphs and equations is plug values into the equation and see if they match up to the graph and like work doing using that. So let's see. So for example, we see in the graph that when x equals 0, y should be negative 3. So let's match that up to the equation. That tells us that negative 3 equals 2 to the 0 minus a. You could pick other values to plug in as well. You could plug in 2 comma 0 or it looks like 3 comma 4 basically works. But it's so I just plugged in an easy one because we know that 2 to the 0 is going to be 1. So negative 3 is going to be equal to 1 minus a which means that if we rearrange the terms, uh, we're going to have 0 equals 4 minus a. So a equals 4. Okay, cool. Uh, number 12. We have a graph. They told us for a certain group of fish, the graph models the relationship between body length L and tail area A in square centimeters. They give us the uh, L's between 34 and 6. Which equation represents the relationship between body length and tail area? So we see, that's what we have here. We basically see that as body length increases, the tail area goes up. But I see something really interesting, which is, um, actually, scratch what I'm saying. Let's just basically do, do what I just said to do for the previous one. We have a graph. We have equations. We pick an easy point, and we test it out with the equations. And the one that gives us the right answer is going to be the right answer. Brilliant. So let's plug it. Let, let's let's see a, a, a point that's clearly on here. Okay, clearly we're going to pick a point that's clearly on the graph, not like a guesstimate point, but that's like very clearly there. The one that I see is right there. You see that one? That one is 15, comma, 5. So that tells us something interesting. That tells us that the value of x, basically, at that point, is bigger than y. So this actually automatically eliminates b, c, and d. Because with b, c, and d, if we plug 15 in for l, for a, when we're then going to get a bigger value. But we need to get a smaller value, right? Because 5 is less than 15. So the only one that this works for is A. And you don't even need to do any hard math. You can, but just by looking at it, you can tell. Cool. And this is the non-calc section. So actually, that makes perfect sense. Non-calc section doesn't make you do any really difficult math. Number 13. X, Y is a solution to the given system of equations. What is the value of X? Solve this in any manner you want. You can use substitution. You can use elimination. I usually recommend elimination because I just think it's usually easier. We are aiming to eliminate the variable that is not the one we are solving for. So if we're trying to solve for x, we need to eliminate y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the entire top equation by um, 3. 
I'm going to multiply the entire bottom equation by 2. Because then we're going to get a negative 12y and a positive 12y. And we can add the equations up to eliminate those values. So this will result in the first top equation becoming 24x minus 12y equals 21. The bottom equation becomes 6x plus 12y equals um, 24. And now we simply add the equations together. Because once we, eliminate, once we add the equations together, we get 30x. The y's get eliminated because it becomes 0y equals 45. So x equals 1.5. Double check, okay, we solved for x, that's what we needed, so a should be the answer. Sweet. Okay, let's look at 14. 14, uh, we have a system of equations, we, we have two equations, system of equations. There's one solution, okay, this is an important piece of information, of information. there's one solution, that means they crisscross somewhere. They're not parallel, nor are they the same line with one equation being a multiple of the other one. Just a normal system of equations, normal two normal lines that cross somewhere. Which of the following could be the value of k? First of all, it cannot be 2, because 2 would uh, make it so that they have the same slope, right? Which would make it so that they're parallel. They cross at one point, but parallel lines never cross. So that one's gone. Can it be 5? Yeah, because if it's going to be 5, the second equation doesn't become a multiple of the first equation. They don't end up having the same slope. You have two entirely different equations. So yeah, it could be 5, no problem. So our answer is B. And the last one of the multiple choice. We have this equation. We need to get the interpretation of 1.11. So let's just read through the answer choices. The model predicts that there are approximately 1.11 flower beetles in this area on June 1st. Well, that, is, that wouldn't work actually because you can even, you can prove this mathematically because if A were true, that means T would be 0. But when T is 0, you would get an answer of 100 for B of T, not 1.11. So A is out. B, the model predicts the number of flower beetles in this area increases by approximately 1.11 each day. This could be true if this were a linear function. The problem is it's exponential, so it doesn't increase by exactly 1.11 each day. When you, when you have an exponential function, it increases by a different amount each day. The, the model predicts it will take approximately 1.11 days for to, to double. But that doesn't make sense either. Basically, that means that if we plug 1.11 in for t that you, the function would give you like 200 so no bueno so let's read d but it's got to be d just from elimination um my predicts the number of flower beetles grows by a factor of approximately 1.11 each time and that's true by a factor means it doesn't grow by the same exact value but by like up by a percentage so d is going to be our answer <sighs> okay 18 minutes 47 seconds in deep um, or whatever it is, let's finish up. Number 16, in the xy plane, the graph of y equals 1 have x plus b, where b is a constant, intersects the x-axis as negative 6, 0. What is the value of b? They give us a point, they give us an equation. Ladies and gentlemen, plug the point into the equation, and then you'll get your missing variable. So, 0 equals 1 half times negative 6 plus b. So 0 equals negative 3 plus b. So b equals 3. Easy peasy. Number 17. Uh, for part of the trip, car traveled directly away from a starting point at a constant speed. Um, blah, 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 blah. What was the speed of the car in miles per hour during this part of the trip? Okay. Cool. So look where we started and where we finished. We started over here. We finished over here. So we're going to do 135 minus 110 over 0.5 hours, okay? This gives us 25 over 0.5 
So 25 over 1 half, which is just 50. Number 18, in the xy plane, the graph of the given equation is of a circle. What is the radius of the circle? Ooh, these are... Yeah, these are a little bit annoying, I'll be honest. But I'll show you how to do it. you got to do completing the square on this. Basically, you need to get this into the standard equation of a circle. The way you do it is you do completing the square. Let me walk you through it. Basically, what you do is you take half of the coefficient of the um, x term and you square it and you add that to both sides. And you take half of the coefficient of the y term and you square it and you add it to both sides. And then you get the equation of a circle. So let me show you how you do it. So write down the original stuff. So x squared minus 8x. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So we add a 16. Plus y squared minus 10y. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. So plus 25. equals 40 plus 16 plus 25. The reason we have to add it to the right side is because, well, we basically just add the numbers to the left side. The reason we do completing the square and we're not just adding random numbers is because this ultimately gets us basically two like perfectly factorable, but perfect squares, which are going to look like the equation of a circle. Just watch. So we're going to factor this part, and then we're going to factor this part. So this factors into x minus 4 times x minus 4, which becomes x minus 4 squared. This part becomes y minus 5 times y minus 5, which is y minus 5 squared. And the right side, we get 81. So, frankly, so basically this gets us the equation of a circle. The whole point of this entire process was to go from our original equation to this. Because from this, we know everything about the circle. We know the center of the circle. We know the radius of the circle. Once you get really, really good at this, you might not even have to go through all of the steps. But if you're not that good at it right now, you should. So... Our equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So this 81 that we have on the right side is equivalent to the radius squared, which means the radius is the square root of 81, which is 9. That's it. Number 19, x squared minus 6x plus 7 equals 0. What is the sum of the solutions to the equation above? You could just factor this. We get the solutions and add them up, but there is a shortcut. The shortcut to get the sum of the solutions of a quadratic, remember this is specifically for a quadratic, is sum of solutions equals negative b over a, which is going to be negative negative 6, so 6 over 1, because the coefficient of the x squared term is 1. So this equals 6. 6. Okay, and now we are up to the last one. Uh, given expression a is a constant, the expression is equivalent to x to the 6th power. What is the value of a? We're just going to basically rewrite this. So x to the square root of x to the third is the same thing as x to the 3 halves power. But we're also raising this to the a power, and this is equal to x to the 6th. When you raise a power to another power, you multiply the exponent. So this is x to the 3a over 2 equals x to the 6. When you have the same basis and you're solving for a variable in the exponents, you can drop the basis. So we can just drop these x's. So 3a over 2 equals 6. So 3a equals 12. So a equals 4. Finish just in time? Yes! Great. Okay, and that's it. That is the non-calc section. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them in the comments below. As always, subscribe to the channel, like the video, send it to all your friends and family. That's it. See you in the next video.